steamer, so to go to a new land would be a real adventure. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were used to traveling. We weren't, uh, you know, we've done a lot of traveling, so this is just another step for God. Oh, and Ken, you were married to Margaret around that time. What you, would you think of Don moving from Canada to Australia? <coughs> well, again, I didn't know Don very well. Uh, mm -hmm. He uh, was in the Navy, Naval Reserve when we got married, and um, he did drop in a couple of times when we were just newly married, so mm -hmm. I, I got to know him generally. But um, no, he was a real adventurous. He was uh, single and ready to see the world, and uh, and took advantage of it. So, and he loved history, loved to delve into history, so the pe the people of the world would interest him. And, and he did that with his uh, trek across India and so on and hmm. before he coming to Australia. So that's kind of uh, yeah. the kind of person I got to know. Most hmm. people would never have that chance. No. A lot of people in those, you know, those years, 75, um, most people settled down and stayed. They wouldn't have an adventure like that. You really had to pick up and, and leave family and friends and everything else. It's a big jump. Yes, I mm, makes, it makes you kind of proud, really. You know, I have a brother in Australia, yeah. and that was a long way away in those days. What contact, when you and Ken were married, what contact did you have with Don when he went to Australia? Well, um, I don't really remember a lot of contact. You were teaching, we were teaching, we were both teaching, and we had two young boys, so. Our life was pretty busy. It would probably just be phone calls and, I suppose, a postcard if we got to travel, um, a few letters, mm. and that was about it. Aww. Do you remember anything no, else? No, no. It was so far away from our lifestyle that we we knew he was there, but didn't know much about it. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, when Don had his accident in 1978, uh, had you seen Don since then? Or? No. No. We, uh, that was three years after he'd gone, and uh, it was a shock out of the blue. I know my parents laughed to get in there very, very quickly, and it was just hard to imagine what actually had happened. And uh, it took a while to get the facts straight. You know, I mean, phone calls were few and far between. So. so it was pretty hard on the family being half a world away. And yeah, 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 it was, because there was no way, you know, I could afford to go out, or that they needed me out there particularly. Out here. Out, yeah, out okay. here. You're in Australia. You're in Australia now. It, uh, Mom and Dad went out, and I was glad of that. They were free to go. So, uh, it was just a real shock, and then when you get the final news and begin to realize what it means, mm. it's even worse, but I just couldn't get out there. I think one thing that uh, gave us great hope with Don's recovery was the um, article in the newspaper on uh, Don's therapy, and they did a sort of a write-up on him, mm. and then he sent it to us, and all of a sudden you could see that he still had that spirit and he was going to fight it. Good on and Yeah, it made us feel wonderful. Mm. Yeah. Uh, how have you got on with Don since the accident in 1978? Terrible. Still the same? Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we, we uh, followed, you know, his progress, especially when he was in rehabilitation. And then since then, of course, I think the first trip you made back was in 88 that we saw you. So that was 10 years after the accident. Mm. And by then, he, was, uh, he had traveled a lot to other countries because he had everything organized to do what he had to do. So it was great to see him in Canada. And that's when he got this bus and was traveling around on the continent. So it was really good to see that he was uh, really quite self-sufficient yes. for needing that caretaker. Mm. Uh, and it was good to see.
and he'd recovered and yeah. Wow, well, that he was doing so, so well. Good spirit, yep. Oh yeah, you'd have to have a good spirit to come that distance and uh, you know overcome so many things that we take so much for granted that you know you either have to be able to do yourself slowly or you can't do them and you have to be able to get around them to progress. Yeah, so you, you definitely think he's coped with being quadriplegic. Very well. Very well? Very, very well. Most people <laughs> haven't done half of what he's done. So, it's wonderful. Hmm, well, I came over two weeks ago to Australia and come to see Don for his 60th birthday party. How do you think Don is getting on now that he is 60 years old? Hmm, isn't it you get better with age? <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, well, I think he's still doing very, very well. It uh, will be a challenge to uh, retire gracefully, I think, and uh, keep busy and keep up with your friends hmm. and uh, still feel needed. That, that's the hard thing. If you let it, everything drop, then you wonder, you know, why are you here? So I think he, with his hobbies, he won't have any trouble. Uh, carrying on and hopefully he'll maybe be a bit more commercially successful. Mm. Who knows? What's your view on that, Ken? How do you think Don Oh, I think he'll be fine. He, you know, he's, uh, he's already bragging about this free time to be able to do his own lifestyle. And he's always been a, his own lifestyle person anyway. <laughs> um, but one thing you haven't mentioned in this uh, history of Don is your cancer and his assistance with that. Well, um, you, you're asking about Donald and his 60th birthday. Of course, mm. we came for his party, but I really wanted to come because uh, who knows what's down the road, and Donald did uh, such a service for me. Back in 1998, I was diagnosed with acute myelogenous leukemia, which means my white blood cells were almost down to zero, and I was probably going to die from it if they couldn't get it solved. So I had a year with three uh, severe uh, bouts in the hospital with strong uh, chemotherapy mm. and I was, um, what's the term that they use? Uh, I recovered mean? enough that oh. they would then consider trying to solve the problem which was done by a bone marrow transplant and I asked uh, George, my other brother, uh, to be tested, and our two, two sons, sons, and none of them, they wanted the figure six out of six with all these criteria, and none of them were suitable, and George, I think, was four. And they said, have you got nobody else because uh, you're in trouble if you don't? And I never really thought of Donald because, one, he was so far away, and two, I just felt being in the wheelchair, he wouldn't be able to help me. And they said, you had better talk to him. So I phoned and he got tested here and he was six out of six, <laughs> which meant he would be a perfect donor of bone marrow. So in uh, 1999, in the summer, in July, he came over and went down to London to the cancer hospital with me and the doctor thought he'd be about an hour and they would extract bone marrow and it would be frozen and then injected into me. Well, in half an hour, the doctor came back and said, I can't believe it, but we can't get enough bone marrow to do the job. And we were all in shock, but he said, well, don't worry, we'll uh, take all his blood out and we circulate it through a machine that takes the stem cells out and we'll combine it with the bone marrow. So it was pretty straightforward for Donald. Um, he provided stem cells and then about two weeks later um, he was all done. It didn't bother him too much to make this donation. Two weeks later I went in and uh, I was just in my hospital bed and they came in and just dripped it in, this combination, and saying happy birthday because 
I was going to have a new life, and I changed my blood count. I became B positive rather than O positive. Changed my blood completely because they had took it all out and uh, cleaned it and put this new combination in. And from then on, I have recovered and uh, have had seven years of perfect checkups thanks to Donald. So um, he's been a marvelous brother. Good on him. Yes. Oh. I'd like to thank you for the interview and I hope you enjoy your stay in Western Australia. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you very much. Thank you. We've enjoyed doing this. To be here. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks.